Hello, visuals. Welcome back to the Visual Guys podcast with me. And me. I thought that was kind of nice to think. I think the, because uh, this is the first time you're going to ever be able to make an actual thing and give a thought about it, uh, is the, the shit that regarding Mr. Stan Lee, the great and late Stan Lee. Yeah. Um, I've got a huge video coming up on Wednesday, just given what he's done for my life and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I thought it'd be quite nice as well. You didn't know it from the comic book world, which is fair enough. No. But uh, I thought it'd be nice for you to just sit. And uh, if you can, because usually this is where your brain gets fried. Okay. Um, who was your favourite Stanley creation? Thought it'd be quite nice to find out yours. No one needs to know mine because. <laughs> yeah, well, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, if you have one, and if you can think of one, or if you know one, because you, you, to be fair, like as much as you're, you're a, a Stanley cameo fan, if that's fair yeah. to say. Um, but he created like the Fantastic Four, Spider Man. Well, Fantastic Four was his first film, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the family. But uh, Spider Man was his crown jewel, and, yeah. Ma- and Marvel's crown jewel, and it still is the face of Marvel. To be fair, the other characters have got just as big. But uh, I, don't, was... I, don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like you said, I didn't really know him that well mm. until he really like started popping up in the films, and well, then. Here's, here's another one to try and think of that. If, if you can't think of a favourite character, <laughs> you, you're going to die. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite Stanley cameo? As in? Uh, which is your favourite cameo from the Marvel films? Right, okay. That's what I mean. If you have, I know mine, like... But you did that many, though. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, there's, there's that many? I think mine... I don't think I had a favourite. <laughs> Mine one hundred percent is from the Amazing Spider Man two. Um, Tony Stank. <laughs> no, that's from Civil War. Oh. Tony Stank. No, uh, where Peter Parker's getting his um, graduation stuff, and they say Peter uh, Parker, and he goes, "Hey, I think I know that guy." Yeah. I just I don't know, that always even the one from the Amazing Spider Man one where he's in the library with his headphones on. And and <laughs> yeah, him. it's even uh, Infinity War is like, "Have you kids not seen a spaceship before?" Or um, the one from the f- original Spider-Man trilogy where he goes, um, I guess one person can make a difference. And he goes, enough said, and walks off, and he's talking to Peter Parker. Mm. Any of the interactions with Peter Parker are absolutely amazing. Because obviously that's the whole thing that's for me. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh, the, Spider-Man. The Winter Soldier one's class where Cap comes back to get his uh, uniform. He's like, oh, I'm going to get so fired for this. The one in Guardians where he's talking to the Watchers and he's like, "Hey, how am I gonna get home?" That was that was a fucking hilarious one. And the ones in fucking uh, I'm in the Wasp where his car gets shrunk. Yeah. Uh, one of them where they're chilling out on the bus and Doctor Strange is fighting. Yes. Um, Avengers Assemble was a good one. Ah, superheroes in New York. You gotta be kidding yeah. me. There was a dinner one where I'm Stan Lee. I should be on the list. Yes, no. yeah. Oh, that was in uh, Fantastic Four, and then in Iron Man, he was Hugh Hefner, wasn't he? Uh, Tony mm-hmm. goes past and goes, "How are you doing, Hugh?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so many and fucking like, awesome and ones. Like we said downstairs, he's got another five more cameos to do. Yeah, that's already been lined up for him. Um, it's fucking weird. This whole thing about Deadpool replacing him in future ones is a fantastic idea, and they should be able to sneak it in now because of um. Disney and the Fox deal and stuff hmm. and it doesn't have to be a swear or anything in these cameos I think it'll be a nice hom- homage and as well I think they should always somewhere if they're going to do an homage for him do not think it like, should pop up like Spider-Man now and then I was about to say they could either have like Spider-Man appear in everything or they could easily have Stan Lee still appear but you could the, just see a, a the, shop sign saying Stan Lee's coffee or a kid walking down the street with a Stan Lee shirt. You think it might be too far if they're still doing it as an AI, for example, like what they do with Paul Walker? Uh, yeah, I think that's a bit... Well, I don't... I, I don't that, that's a weird one, actually, hmm. because then they're forcing him to be in it, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Uh, I... <sighs> I don't know. That's, yeah, that's... With Paul Walker, it was different because he was halfway through a film. Yeah, they were finishing a film. Through a film. So yeah, I can understand that that is different. But do the the worst thing is when uh, the next time we go to a Marvel outing, which will be Captain Marvel, and the, the the last thing we see will be 
the RIP thank you blah 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 that's going to be fucking oh I know it's going to be fairly minging it's we, Kevin Smith said it best being uh, the first time waking up in a Stanley Luss world. It is. It is. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. It was funny, but I just thought it'd be quite nice for you to just say what your your favorite things were, if you could think, if any. Like I say, I don't really have a favorite thing. I was still getting to know the guy and yeah. like I say, watching his films and can't get rid of you in your comic books. It's kind of like all grew on me more over the past. I think three years than that as yeah. anything else. Well, since we started being really chilling out. Well, I, I like to, when people started to really notice who he was, obviously the comic book fans already knew it, but the film goers just started to, oh, it's that same guy, keep appearing. And then they start to finally find out who he is. But yeah, I just, I thought it'd be nice for you to give, because like I said, we, yeah, you've shared stuff on social media, but you haven't really expressed out no. and this the best time. But uh, I've got a whole video on my thoughts and my homage and my little tribute to him coming up on Wednesday. And the only reason why I've left it to Wednesday is because I thought it would be amazing that a show that wouldn't happen on our channel if he wasn't around. So I thought to dedicate a Superhero Wednesday to the, the king of superheroes was, was quite a cool idea. Because mm -hmm. I said to, at the moment in my video, I say, without uh, Spider-Man, there's no, like, me and my personality. Without me, there's no visual guys. Without no visual guys, there's no Superhero Wednesday. And obviously, without all of that, with no Spider-Man, suddenly there's no any of that. Not so I thought, it, I thought it was quite nice of that. I thought I'd save it for Superhero Wednesday. But yeah, anyway... Um, yeah, final thoughts on Stan. Let's, uh, Excelsior, enough said. Excelsior. So, Just, did we figure that we even, I don't think even he knows what Excelsior means. Yet, Excelsior, he? that, <laughs> back to the cameos in, uh, Age of Ultron where he's drunk drinking Thor's, uh, liquor, uh, alcohol and he's like, uh, Excelsior, yeah, and he says it pure slurred and thing he'd, man, he was such a crazy character, like, he was such a crazy character. But what else is uh, what else is going on to try and uh, I, I wish I wish to God I had a uh, a story to tell like Kevin Swift on his podcast oh, where thinking, that would have been that would have been amazing. But uh, his his stories that that have affected me because uh, it's weird. People, someone at work have said, "How can you be so upset with somebody you didn't know?" And I'm like, "Well, I may not know him, but you I don't know I him did. personally, but you, you kind of like I did. Yeah, grew he, up with him, kind of thing. We were through." Comic books. Oh yeah, all of his, film. all of his characters that he created, he put his thoughts and how he should be and how people should be. He put his all into it, so, so I did know him. I've grown up with him. Yeah, it was weird, but <sighs> this fucking, it's just a weird thing to go on. It is. But yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna try and try and switch it up and be happy, and I got a Carnage Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> the, the the best thing. I think Stan Lee would would hate people to to be sat going fucking like upset and and being depressed and shit like that because every time you seen him he was I, when it, when you google Stan Lee it's as weird as well when you google Stan Lee every picture he's smiling in now mm. I know that's that's something easy but if you google for example ah, Alan Shearer he's a football player if you don't know there'll be so many pictures of him just not smiling and being normal but every picture of Stan Lee is smiling yeah. I think that's something really to take note for so yeah I think I think he won't want us all being all doomy and gloomy and stuff because as long as these stories and these characters like Spider-Man... I mean, as long as his legacy will still live on, I, I, I think he'll be happy with that. Exactly. Uh, I know it's that as well. There's a, a, a late night show host. I can't, uh, Jay Leno? Is it Jay Leno? Whoever it is uh, had a pop and he said he doesn't know why people are so upset. Uh, comic books don't really do anything for the world and he's got a shitload of backlash like... He's, uh, people are absolutely having his life and stuff. I think that's stupid because um, it doesn't matter what you think. If like I could write a story, and somebody might think it hasn't done anything, but for you, it might have changed your life. And I think that's something. Even if a, a comic book has changed one person's life and the oh, person that was inspiring them, it should be up to the person who's affected by it to determine whether or not they should be upset, not somebody else. Just because you don't see the point in comic books and what they do for people. Because at the end of the day, people see comic books as like, arts, oh, kids cartoon. But it's another form of storytelling, and storytelling is the most one of the most powerful things you, as a human, as a race, you can have. Yeah, they change everything. One film, or one line in a film, one quote in a film, one anything on a story or a book you've read can completely change your life forever. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think it's stupid. You shouldn't let like I don't know. You maybe you weren't or or you're not, but. 
you're into car racing and shit like that. Yeah. Um, Colin McRae died. For all I know, that could have affected your life. I personally don't understand it because I'm not into that world. Mm -hmm. But if you were affected by when he passed, it's not up to me to say, why are you affected by that? That doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? I was good if Colin McRae died because obviously he was a brilliant rally driver. Well, that's what I mean. You love what he's in. You love what he's in. Paul Walker, I was fucking... Yeah. Very good when he passed because obviously he was a brilliant actor and like I say I've known him Fast and Furious and I thought he was one of the best actors on the films yeah series it, it's just all stupid if a football player dies or a certain football player when Alan Shearer could go back to eventually pass away I will be gutted because he's part of a team which I love mm. so it's going to be fucking Megan because I love football I used to always play football I, you know during the whole number nine celebration St James's Park that'll be a dream of mine so, yeah, I just think it's stupid. You shouldn't be able to determine when or why people should be upset for whatever reason. No. It makes Regardless no sense. of <laughs> comic books, cars, or I reckon, I don't know, conkers. Yeah, i tell you what, conkers. <laughs> we will go on to a happy subject, or well, a happier subject. Gerard Leto tweeted out a load of pictures of him shaving, and it was uh, he's left like himself a bit of a moustache and a bit of thingy in uh, preparation for Morbius the Living Vampire. Oh, yeah, it looks... Uh... Looks weird. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on with the future of the Joker. You know, I think they might just be cancelling his Joker. They've got the uh, uh, Birds of Prey coming out, the all women yeah. Gotham films, but hardly that in it. Yeah. So I don't know what the future well, of the Joker. Should kind holds. of make an appearance in there then. Well, yeah, he should do. Unless or... he unless he is, then he's just. I thought they were doing a Harley and Joker film. I don't know what's going on. It's 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 a weird one. If I was Gerard Leto, I would maybe. Say, listen, right, I'm going to focus on more basic char character which I could maybe extend a bit more for people and just focus and stuff. I understand why you'd be maybe gutted. Maybe what he's doing then. Yeah. I'd be gutted never. if I was playing the Joker and two minutes later there's another Joker and we're all doing a film at the same time. I think, I don't know, it's weird because as a fan, I don't mind seeing it, but as a performer, as someone trying to define and own their role as a character, there should be a bit of space between it all. You get what I'm getting at? Yeah. Like, Do you not think that there's, there's too many... Well, I can't really say that. Yeah, if... Uh, too many, you're going to say too many Jokers? Yeah. If they, yeah. if they do start chucking out loads of Joker stuff, it might get a bit saturated. Like, if we had Joker in Gotham season, we get two more Joker films coming out now, and then a, and Joker in a whatever it may be. It's like, oh, fucking hell, man. We mm. need to have one to identify with one and leave their own lasting mark. It's stupid. So bad. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see Gerald Leto's Morbius. I can't wait to see Woody Harrelson is is Carnage. I've just looked at my phone call again. <laughs> it's fucking mint, man. <clears throat> These fucking see, this what I mean. We're having a normal conversation here. I'm bringing it back to Stan. And it all refers yeah. back to Stan. Yeah, I mean, granted that Joker and stuff isn't in relation to to Stan Lee, but I think he must have had a a massive impact on the DC world just he, as much as with Marvel. Yeah. They would, have done. They, would have, they would have like collaborated with some ideas at some point. Yeah, there's there's not a uh, a huge. I know there were some characters that he didn't over, he didn't particularly like Superman because he he liked his characters uh, to be believable. And what he means by believable is there's the reason why you, a, a a a spider which was radioactive bit a person. Yeah, so all. It, it was more of the <laughs> normal everyday people that developed these weird yeah like a weird science stuff developed these weird. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Powers, enhancements. Well, yeah, enha yeah, enhancements are more like and like people who came from space and fucking. <laughs> yeah, he, he liked his characters to be. That's why I love Spider Man. I know you're not the biggest Spider Man fan, no. but I love Spider Man because he's a hero you can get behind. I've done so many videos on why I love Spider Man. I'm doing it again uh, because he he's got so much. He's got amazing power. He can do so much, but not every battle is an easy win for him. He's always got an uphill battle and stuff. And that's why the scene in Homecoming fucking kills us because you realise... Logan can kick your Spider-Man in though. Ooh. <laughs> ah, that's a good one to let us know in the comments below. Visuals, who wins, Wolverine or Spider-Man? Okay, which before we go, which Wolverine are you going for? You're going for Hugh Jackman Hugh Wolverine. Jackman for Wolverine. I'm going to go for the superior Spider where Dr. Octo put his mind inside of Spider-Man because that man was fucking savage, right? And it, it, he was really hard to beat. Spider-Man eventually had to beat him from inside his own mind. It's fucking nuts, mate. But yeah, visuals, who wins? Wolverine or Spider-Man? Let's go in the comments below. Love you, bro. Uh, keep being here. Keep on keeping web slinging on. on. Hey, see? See? <laughs>